Greetings, Truth Seekers, and welcome back to another episode of the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true, and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker, and if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. In our last episode, we left Joseph in prison. Joseph had been thrown in prison for something he didn't do. And to top that, the cupbearer whose dream Joseph interpreted forgot all about Joseph and didn't mention him to Pharaoh when he was restored to his place in the palace. So there sat Joseph in prison. Do you know how long Joseph waited in prison? Two whole years. Joseph waited in prison for two years for a crime that he did not commit. Now here is where I must ask you a question, truth seekers. Have you ever had something done to you that you felt was unfair? Maybe you were blamed for something you didn't do, like Joseph. Maybe someone did something to you or hurt you when you hadn't done anything wrong. Let me tell you a little secret. There are going to be times in your life when things happen to you that aren't fair. It's all how we react to those things that matter. Did you notice how Joseph responded to the unfair situations in his life? The Bible tells us that Joseph worked hard in whatever situation he found himself in, and he didn't complain. He trusted God despite what had been done to him. I'm sure it was hard for Joseph. And I'm sure there were times when he asked God, what is going on? But Joseph put his trust in God, and God rewarded him for that. After two years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. Oh boy, here we go with another dream. Pharaoh dreamt that he was standing by the Nile River. When out of the river there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the weeds. After them, seven other cows came up out of the river, except these cows were ugly and skinny. They came up out of the Nile River and stood beside those on the riverbank who were sleek and fat. Now the cows that were ugly and skinny ate up the seven fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. When Pharaoh fell back asleep, he had a second dream. In this dream, seven heads of grain, healthy and good, were growing on a single stalk. After them, seven other heads of grain sprouted that were thin and scorched by the east wind. The thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven healthy full heads of grain. Then Pharaoh woke up. It had been a dream. In the morning his mind was troubled, so he sent for all of the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one in all the land could interpret them for him. Pharaoh thought, is there anyone in all of Egypt who might be able to tell me what these dreams mean? Well, truth seekers, Who do you know that would be able to interpret Pharaoh's dream? If you said Joseph, then you are correct. All of a sudden, the cupbearer, the one whose dream was interpreted by Joseph, the one who had forgotten to tell Pharaoh about Joseph, remembered. He said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded that I forgot about a man who is in prison who is able to interpret dreams. He is a young Hebrew and was there with me and the baker as a servant of the captain of the guard of the prison. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each of us the interpretation of our dream. And things turned out exactly as he interpreted them to us. I was restored to my position as cupbearer, and the baker was hanged. So Pharaoh sent for Joseph and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When Joseph had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one can interpret it. 
But I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And then Joseph said something that surprised everyone. He said, I cannot do it. Oh, Joseph, what are you doing? This is your chance to get out of prison. Why would Joseph say such a thing? But then Joseph continued, and he said, I cannot do it, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. What a brave young man Joseph was. Here, standing before the king of all of Egypt, Joseph could have taken the credit for himself, but instead he gave all the credit to God. So Pharaoh began to tell Joseph his dream about the seven fat cows being eaten by the seven skinny cows, and the seven healthy heads of grain being swallowed up by the seven thin and scorched heads of grain. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one and the same. God has revealed to you what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads of grain are seven years. It is one and the same dream. The seven skinny and ugly cows that came up afterward are seven years, and so are the seven worthless heads of grain scorched by the east wind. They are seven years of famine. Joseph said, God has shown to you, Pharaoh, what he is about to do. The seven fat cows and healthy heads of grain represent seven years of abundance throughout Egypt where your crops will grow much food. But after that, the seven skinny cows and unhealthy heads of grain represent seven years of famine when the abundance in Egypt will be forgotten and the famine will ravage the land and it will be so severe that the seven good years will be forgotten because there will be no food to be found in the land. And then Joseph, not only did he tell Pharaoh the meanings of the dream, but told Pharaoh why he had two different dreams with the same meaning. He said the reason the dream was given to Pharaoh in two forms is because the matter has been firmly decided by God. God will do it soon, and nothing will change his mind. So Joseph continued to speak, and he said to Pharaoh, Find a discerning and wise man, and put him in charge of the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh appoint commissioners over the land to take a fifth of the harvest of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should collect all the food of these good years that are coming up and store the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to be kept in the cities for food. This food should be held in a safe place for the country to be used only when the seven years of famine come so that Egypt will have food and not be ruined by the famine. Wow! God had given Joseph not only the interpretation to the dreams, but he had given Joseph wisdom to speak to Pharaoh about what to do. Now what happens next will surprise you, just like I'm sure it did Joseph. Pharaoh looked around to all of his officials and said, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. Joseph, you will be in charge of my palace, and all my people are to submit to your orders. Only with respect to the throne will I be greater than you. I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh said, I am king. But without your word, no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt. Did you hear that? Joseph went from being a prisoner to second in command of all of the land of Egypt in one day. The Bible says that Joseph traveled throughout Egypt and during the seven years of abundance, the land produced so much food and Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years and stored it in the cities. In each city he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. 
There was so much food that Joseph had to stop keeping record of it because it was beyond measure. Joseph married and had children. He had two sons. His first son was named Manasseh. Manasseh means God has made me forget all my trouble. And the second son he named Ephraim, which means God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. And so the seven years of abundance came to an end, and the seven years of famine began, just as Joseph had said. There was also famine in all of the other lands besides Egypt, but in the whole of the lands only Egypt had food ready. When the people began to cry out, We need food! Pharaoh sent them to Joseph, and he opened up the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians. And people from all over the lands outside of Egypt came to buy grain as well. For God had used Joseph to prepare Egypt to save people from starving, not only in Egypt, but in all the lands surrounding Egypt. Dear Truth Seekers, what is the truth we find in this story? What truth can you find as you've learned about Joseph's story? One truth we find in this story is that while Joseph suffered greatly, he never allowed his suffering to turn his back on God. It was in the darkest, most difficult moments of Joseph's life that he leaned on God and believed that God was still in control. God blessed Joseph by putting him in charge of all of Egypt because he saw in Joseph's heart a humble attitude and one that did not become bitter or resentful. Even Pharaoh himself saw the Spirit of God living inside of Joseph. And that was something that didn't happen overnight. That was something that came about because Joseph had spent time praying and trusting and leaning on God all those years he was in slavery and in prison. Now you might think that this is the end of Joseph's story that we can say that Joseph lived happily ever after. But you would be mistaken, because there are still more amazing things to come that God has in store for Joseph. But you will just have to wait until our next episode to find out. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in Genesis chapter 41. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode as we learn about one last surprise for Joseph. Let me pray for you before we go. Dear Father, we thank you that you are never content to leave us as we are. You are always molding us and shaping us to look more like you. Help us to trust you and love you and not complain or get bitter when difficult things happen. Even when unfair things happen to us, help us to trust you because you are always working things together for our good just like you did with Joseph. Help us to develop character like Joseph so that when people look at us, they can say, is there anyone like this one in whom the Spirit of God dwells? Let our lives reflect your glory. Amen. Thank you so much to those of you who have been listening and following along with our stories. It's good to hear from you in the comments and reviews you've left on Instagram and iTunes. It's so nice to know that you're out there and listening. I pray God's blessings over you, and I look forward to our time together next week.